So, John, we came down today to see your business here, uh, Griffin Potatoes. That's right. Um, I suppose it's part of what we do in Vantage Ireland with, with Trimble. We're trying to maybe make, make uh, say, the public aware of what our customers are doing, um, you know, the relevance of the technology, uh, I suppose how their business functions, what you're actually selling to the public to make the whole thing um, yeah. viable and economic, I suppose. Maybe could you give a, a background to your business and when it started? Um, I suppose my grandfather started growing potatoes in the early 1940s. Um, it was actually for an export market to England after the war for supplying London with potatoes. That was basically it. And there used to be a boat, I think, every Tuesday and Thursday go out to ring a skiddy. So there was a lot of farmers around here grew spuds for that market for right. a few years. So that's how the whole thing kicked off. And my father then kind of took started grow, was with my grandfather that time I suppose up until the same through the 70s and 80s and 90s and I kind of started then when when I left school when I finished school that time so right okay yeah. so, so in, in Ireland it's fair to say that there was a, every everyone probably grew their own potatoes that's right um, and a lot of people have left the industry over the years probably because of maybe the mechanization and the scale required that's right you have a big history of I suppose employing technology yeah, in yeah, the process yeah. inside but equally on the farm that's right I kind of personally never had any fear of technology you kind of just go with it and I like technology right it does it definitely makes life easier I know there's no doubt about it it does yeah. and there's a constant need for investment I suppose really is there oh there is in this business yeah there's no yeah. end to it yeah no end to it so and say in terms of your, your your potato business, are you selling to the to trade and to, to supermarkets or, or what, what? yeah we're selling kind of half and half between wholesale trade and selling direct to supermarkets then as well so okay it's all packaged in our own brands so we kind of lots of other farmers maybe might supply direct to the packers of the different supermarkets but we just kind of we were so long at it we just wanted to keep our own brand and we kind of drove on at that then so we're busy busy enough yeah okay busy. and you deliver all your own potatoes say with a truck like this as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. you haven't outsourced that as such you just no you like we just like to keep that in house yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so we've one full-time driver delivering constantly all the very time. good and is it all Munster or are you going further or uh generally Munster yeah generally Munster okay. Cork Kerry Limerick Tipperary yeah and the sale for product for 12 months of the year typically we're supplying 12 months of the year yeah yeah, yeah. you have okay. to that's so uh, we started our season there I suppose around the start of July with Queen's and we go right through what we're harvesting at the minute is pinks and rooster so kind of next month then once we get into october we'll start storing everything which will be in store up until next june again until we start queens again right okay so it's 52 weeks a year supply very good so what we might do is we might go and have a look at the whole bagging facility how you wash your potatoes yeah, or whatever no problem, yeah. no maybe matter. john then might discuss how you use your tractors and the, the trimble systems on it and yeah. how you use technology out in the field so no problem you're very welcome okay very thank welcome. you so, John, what's happening here? So, they're the boxes that are after coming in from the field now. So, the boxes go straight into the washer. So, there's no, we don't grade them first or anything. They go straight in. It's just to, the more handling you give them, the more you kind of scurf the skin. Right. So, the less handling. So, it's straight from the field in the box into the box tipper, screen, the stoner, and washer. Okay. Yeah. We'll go up and have a look at some of the prices. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, the potatoes are coming on the conveyor, so having, yeah. having left the box, eh? what's happening then? They're going on to a screen sizer then. You can just yeah. see the small ones coming out here. Yeah. And why are they not all being washed, eh? Uh, no if you wanted to take seed off of them, you yeah. take the seed out here because you don't want that going into store washed. Right. They won't, they won't keep it in at that instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you keep it that way. So that's mainly... So here then, it's landing in the water, obviously then. They're landing in the water, so it's a, it's a de-stoner to take out any stone or clod or whatever it is. So all it is is a plume of water coming up. Uh, the spot is denser, so it'll come up, flow back up with the water, whereas the stone or clod of earth will fall out, fall down, and out this conveyor here. Then. Okay, on that, okay. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Very similar to bead washing, I would say. Very similar, Yeah. Very similar exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I have to say it does work 100%. Yeah, there's no stone goes that way and there's no spot goes that yeah. way. So. Okay. Yeah. So again, what's happening here then? So here we have a it's a it's a three meter barrel washer. So there's just a barrel with the potatoes inside and it's rubber lined. 
So the potatoes are just going around slowly inside in it. And it's actually the potatoes rubbing off one another that actually wash them clean. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's not going fast, it's only just going slow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Would you change the water often in that in the process? Uh, once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually very economical on water. Use the same water, you have your rinse bar here then. That just cleans the, any excess dirty water. So it's clean water coming out there. So I see everything is rubbered in as well. There's no hard surfaces. No, 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 okay. no, no. All rubber. Skin damage, is that an issue or could be an issue if it was a, in places? Or uh, it, it can be early in the season, yeah, it yeah. can be. Uh, that washer is actually pintle lined, so there's little rubber pintles inside it just to make it more gentle handling them, so. Okay. So is that is that another way of washing it here again? This that's this? just a final rinse. Right. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we move on then. So to the next section there. So lots of motors, lots of motors. So every individual shaft has its own direct drive. So the the sponges, you have a line rows of sponges on top with a metal roller underneath, squeezing the sponge every time it goes around. So it just takes the excess water off it. Like that one is wet coming out. It's relatively dry. Yeah. It's not dry completely, but it just takes the excess water off it. Right, okay. Yeah. And the water then is dropping down. Yeah, it's just collected in a tray underneath back it. Into the whole back into the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. So it's ready then onto the shoot for the packing plant? Yeah, straight into the into the, the inspection then after that. Okay. And you were saying it's all the, the bagging and the packing, it's all linked to this machine. That's not Every, working inside this stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So every, everything is linked from the palletizer. If that stops, when all the rest of the conveyors are full all the way back, everything else will stop itself. Yeah. Okay. It just stops, overflows and yeah. it's huge changes in mechanization since your grandfather started this. Yeah. Uh, grandfather crazy. started growing Opening, tri opening, closing trims with horses, and yeah. opening them again, then to pick them by hand again. So usually manual. Oh, huge manual. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose that time every farmer grew a few potatoes. That's the way it kind of was. Yeah. Where so it's kind of very specialised job. And it's fair to say this is well, what we're looking at separates you from the other growers in the sense that those who didn't survive, you invested in mechanisation. Yeah. Which kept we, you efficient. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're bagging everything ourselves. Yeah, you're still with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, John, can you explain what's happening here now? Say the potatoes are coming in, and Jim is. Uh, what's Jim pulling out there? Jim is taking out anything, any small one that might be in it, or any bad one, maybe more than anything else. Uh, so, they all come in through the wall, washed or washed outside. So, just final inspection here before they go into the bag. Okay. Uh, they, they drop into a chute then onto the Yeah, they're elevator. dropping into a chute on a conveyor underneath. Okay. To uh, go into a separate box then. And are they discarded or are they used for other processes? Uh, cattle feed mainly. Cattle okay. feed. Yeah. Anything that way would be cattle feed. Fair enough. So, what's happening here then? So, here they're going onto a sizer. So, you've kind of just any small one that you want to take out and anything that'd be left will fall through this conveyor. Anything going to the bag will go through the middle conveyor. You can see the, the rollers lift up. For different sizes so the final one then is for big if it's oversized okay so at the minute there's kind of no oversizing them they're all going to the bag so, so you, you recently installed this machine is that right yeah it's in i suppose three or four months okay and so before you put this in what was your was it done manually or did you just order uh we used to be able to take take off different sizes before okay we can split them three ways here now whatever way we want right maybe for rooster more than anything to bakers we want to take off just when it's car pinks at the moment, now there's no bakers coming off of them, so. So over the years, you've a lot of customers, so with different requirements that you've yeah. for with things like this. The restaurants look for bigger ones for the ba for baking, so there is a market there for that. Okay, yeah, yeah very good. So now the, this is the assembly line then again, so for um, for the bagging line. Yeah, so everything, right? everything that's falling through that middle section is coming out this conveyor. Yeah. Going up the going up into the wear then after that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So right, all up here then to yeah. it's your bag in there. There's kind of a rise and fall hopper on top there. It's just holding a volume of spots to keep the packer going all the time. 
if either one side stops, the other will stay going. So okay. just to give a consistent, consistent supply to the wear. Okay. Yeah. Should we go down so and have a look at the bagger? Yeah. So, so John, off the elevator now, you have uh, There's a, a lot there to work with for the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it's, it's just a hopper to keep keep this supply constantly all the time. So when it lands here, what's happening? So when it, wait, when it lands here, it's putting the spots into 10 different buckets. And what it's doing, it's making a combination out of maybe six or seven or eight of them, so that it's as close to five kgs. But it could be weighing within, that could be 5,010 grams maybe. So it makes up out of the combination of calculating which is closer. Right. What's all about with a machine like this per hour? Uh, per hour, it's working somewhere around 12 or 14 bags a minute. Right. At the moment. Yeah. It's when you stop and change to different pack sizes, then you see you're stopped for maybe 15, 20 minutes so while, you're, while you're changing over. Okay. If we go down so and have a look at the bagging process there. So, John, what's happening here then? So, the bags are already after being weighed, or this plate has already been weighed up there already. So, this machine actually puts the bag on, fills it, and stitches it. So you load your empty bags into the into the magazine. It takes one off the back all the time. Over to the clamp. They're in the holding bucket above it, so down from the holding bucket into the bag and across to the stitcher then. Okay. So it works, it works well. So bags standing onto a conveyor then over here. Yeah, so let's see that the bags, you can see they're landing on sideways. So when they get to there, they'll straighten up then. Okay. So who are you saying supplied all this equipment? Uh, Clifford Woods Machinery in Dublin. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they supply and support the doctor as well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They, uh, they're agents for, we'd say, tongue, automatic, and for broken the palletizer, so. Okay. So we'll have a look at the bag and yeah, yeah. again. So they're coming off the end of that conveyor, turning a 90 degree bend, and going up into the palletizer then to be palleted after that. Right. So this is the the big labour saving device. Why? What was the reality before? It was kind of very monotonous work, like you were just constantly putting bag, moving bags from there to a pallet, and it was you couldn't get anybody to stick it for long term. Yeah. So we've we've actually had a palletizer with the last 20 two or three years, an older one. So as bag sizes have got smaller, the old one was only two, we'd say eight bags a minute, whether it was fives or tens. Yeah. So this one knows it to handle the capacity of more five kgs. Right, okay. Faster. So how many bags to put on a pallet now with this? Uh, just there at the minute now, there's 100 per pallet going on it. Okay. But it yeah. can do anything, you can set it at any... Yeah. yeah. And does it shrink wrap the pallet at all? Or no, it doesn't only... because We'd only wrap it as it's going out. Because yeah. if you wrap it too soon, it'll sweat inside the plastic. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. What we find with it as well is we can, if somebody orders 50 bags, you can just put in 50 and change it back to 100 again. So yeah, huge flexibility with it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. While it's still working, you can change whatever you want on the pallet. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so these uh, these pallets here then are ready for delivery to then? Yeah, they're ready for delivery today now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you do your most your own deliveries as well, do you? We do all our own deliveries, yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Do you connect it to the customer or? Yeah, more or less, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd have, I don't know how many deliveries a day. We could have maybe 14 or 15 different places to go to every day. So, yeah, just supermarkets want them early in the morning. They want you in before nine o'clock and gone before yeah. customers, yeah, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the wall's in, it's insulated panel, is it? It's all insulated panel, panel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just for cleanliness, I suppose more than anything else, there's no steel exposed or anything like that. Yeah. Um, insulated. Unpacking. Not so much here, but obviously for frost in the winter, it has to be insulated. You can't have stuff going out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Perfectly level floor then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we might have a look here. So you were saying earlier about uh, these are for the restaurant trade, is that right? Yeah, the bigger ones are for uh, restaurant trade for bakers. Why do they want them bigger? 
just for bakers, they want them uniform size, so small ones for baking are they're not, they're not much good, John. They need to split them up and then put right. a filling in them. And okay. Yeah. Next one. So you've smalls here then? Yeah. Where are so they for? They'll be going for cattle feed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And same with the next one, or what? And you have the rejects here then, any cut one or bad one or green one or anything like that that's manually picked off then. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah. animal feed again? Animal feed again, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Now, some of the small ones we can keep as seed as well. But just not at the moment, the crop wouldn't be mature enough. Right. So they're not burnt out. Because when they go into store, we'll have some that we will take seed off of again. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Perfect. Your potatoes, when they're harvested, they go into a cold store. That's right. Why, why is that? Um, it's just a, for long term storage, we'll bring them in. They might come in at maybe something between 12 and 14 degrees. So, what we actually want to do first when we bring them in is dry them. Right. So this is actually a, a positive ventilation fridge. So what it's doing is blowing the air out through the top and sucking it back through the crop to get to dry as fast as you can. That's the the key to the storage is to you have to dry it first. And is it sucking it out underneath or is it is it sucking it's, it's sucking it back through the boxes then? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, what temperature would be? Does that temperature vary then at the start versus say for the rest of the year? Yeah. Or so when they're coming in, they're they're coming in at 12, 14 degrees. So we want to, first week is drying is the most important thing. From there on then you're pulling temperature out of them roughly at about a half a degree a day. Right. Until they come to two and a half to three degrees. Okay. And so that's, you, s you keep it at that then? We keep it at that. Okay. Now we'll take, when you have it down to the two and a half to three degrees, it might take another week or a fortnight just to stabilize them completely. Right. And yeah. um, would you check them then during the year or are you what are you looking out for? What things could go wrong, bar um, the temperature? We'd say you're asked. checking yeah, for any rots, uh, silver scurf on the skins. So you need good ventilation to stop the uh, condensation maybe on the top. Yeah. So, so power is a big requirement here oh then. Yeah. You're using yeah, a lot of power. Yeah, yeah, Electricity. Yeah. Especially when we're pulling that temperature from the 12 or 14 down to the two and a half. That's when you are right. really, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're picking here then as you need it. For so the rest of the season, for then. the rest of the season, then they're coming out yeah. whatever way we need it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah back yeah. into your... That's right. Team area or whatever. Yeah. yeah, good. So it, it, the potatoes are never, they're harvested straight into the boxes, straight into the fridge, and out of the fridge, then straight into the, into the washer. Right. So okay. as little handling as possible. Yeah. Very good. So, John, I see here behind, behind us you have your Massey Ferguson 6718 um, with guidance on it. Yeah. So, when did you first introduce? guidance into the feed? Uh, it was in 2019 that we first started with the guidance. So we started off with the guidance auto steer, full, fully auto steer straight away. So it was a big, big change. Very good. Um, and what accuracy is this system on? Uh, it's on RTK. Oh, so you're one inch accuracy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and I suppose, what would this tractor be doing? Generally, I suppose the, the reason we bought it was was for ridging first day. Um, it's just a, the ridging is so important to keep the keep the ridges bang on even straight as well. But evenness is more important that you don't have wide ones and narrow ones. Yeah. If you have them too wide, you have a skip with the sprayer. If you have them too narrow, you have an overlap. So that was the biggest reason we bought it was to keep them straight and even even Very is the big good. thing and you can see the benefits from using the system oh yeah 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 i couldn't it was a job that i didn't particularly like before it was just you were all day just concentrating so much but yeah. now it's just you can sit back and leave the tractor do the work you just leave it do it that's it Very good. <laughs> that's great right so john with this tractor you were saying you use the guidance on this for ridging yeah do you use it for anything else throughout the planting process um i know we'd use it for for lots of things um but i suppose until we build up we actually have a new sprayer bought for next season that is section control ray control so i suppose as we go along we'll build up more machinery fertilizer spreader maybe at some time to tie back to, to, tie back to the gps that's the way it's going to go that's the way the future will be i think so Very good. yeah yeah so your new sprayer now for next year you'll automatically be able to control rate and section control through the gps on your track that's right yeah yeah and through the ibus as well on the same screen so very good yeah